Hello everyone and welcome to my book binding tutorial. Did I put on a whole face of makeup just to film five minutes worth of video? Yes. Yes I did. In this tutorial today I'm going to show you how to make this really cute little sketchbook. I will be using this for my jester cosplay. I have also made other books in the past. I've got Caleb's two spell books. Um, I also have this little advanced potions making book that I made. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure some of you are wondering why you would go through the entire process of making a book for a cosplay when you could just, you know, buy a book. <laughs> and let me tell you, the reason I make books is because I'm extra. <laughs> I will be leaving two uh, other YouTube channels that I have watched and followed that are also both very helpful to the bookmaking process. Uh, one of them is Sea Lemon, who I watched <laughs> like crazy when I first started bookbinding. The second is Nerdforge, who just does really, really awesome fantasy tomes and just really, really great work. I recommend checking out both of them if you would like to learn more about different styles of bookmaking. What if I just make some ASMR with it? Soothing. So anyway, without further ado, let's get the tutorial going. For this project, you will need some paper. I am harvesting mine from a drawing sketch pad. You will also need a ruler and something to mark with, as well as something to poke holes with. I'm using an awl, but you could also use a thumbtack. You'll need some embroidery thread, as well as a large needle. I prefer to use a curved needle, but a straight needle would work as well. I keep large binder clips on hand. These work in place of a book press. You'll need cutting utensils as well. I keep scissors and a craft knife handy. This is optional, but I like to use a paper cutter to trim my pages to size. You could also just use a craft knife and a ruler. You'll also need some decorative paper for your covers. And I'm choosing to cover my books with fabric, but you could also just use more decorative paper. If you plan to go the fabric route, you'll also need some tissue paper as well as some heat and bond and an iron. To start, I'm taking my sketch pad and removing all of the paper. This pad has 30 pages, but I only ended up using about half of it. While she does that, let's go over some book information. Most of the books I've made have used the Coptic stitch. I prefer this stitch because unlike a traditionally bound book, the Coptic stitch allows the book to lay flat when open. With Jester's books, I'm choosing to leave the pages blank and clean, but you could easily print your pages before starting. For my books, I've used a book of shadows, a witch's encyclopedia, a, a potions book. I've even created some PDF spell pages of my own. Another fun touch is to tea stain your pages for an aged look. All in all, it's your book and you can put whatever you want inside of it. Once I've removed the last page, I'm also going to be removing the back cover. Set this aside and we'll come back to it later. I wanted my book to be a little bit smaller, so I'm cutting all of my pages in half. Once it's all cut to size, you can start folding your signatures. As time consuming as it is, make sure you fold each page one at a time. Folding a set of pages often means they don't sit right together. For my signatures, I'm using four pages in each. I'm sure you've already noticed at this point that bookmaking is a time-consuming, repetitive process, and you know, it's, it's good to take breaks in between. I recommend petting a cute rat. If you don't have a cute rat, then I suppose a, a cute dog would also work. And well, if you have neither, then I'm sorry, I don't know what to tell you. For my book, I ended up with 16 signatures in total. This created my text block. Now take your signatures and line them up as straight as possible. Then take your binder clips and clip each end of the book, making sure you do not move any of the signatures out of place.
along the spine of your book, this will be the edge with the folds, take your ruler and measure out your stitch lines. Spread these out evenly down the book. Mine measured one inch apart with half an inch on each edge. You can adjust these measurements for your project. Once my lines were marked, I removed the clips. On the folded edge of each signature, there should now be a dot marking your stitch line. In each signature, take your awl or your thumbtack and poke a hole through that dot. Now back to that cover that we sat aside. I'm first measuring my book dimensions, then marking that onto my board. I like to add a little extra to each side, except for the spine. This allows the pages to sit nicely inside the cover. If you do not use a pad of paper, you will need to pick up some chipboard for your cover. If you're doing a fabric cover, now get out your tissue paper and your heat and bond. If you're just using paper, you can skip this part. Start by cutting a piece of heat and bond that will fit both of your covers with a little overlap. Iron this onto your fabric. Once your heat and bond is secure, you can remove the backing. Then place a piece of tissue paper on top of it and iron that into place. Once you've done this, you'll have a nice piece of fabric with a paper backing. This will make it easier to glue down later. To cover my pieces, I start by tracing around their shape, then adding about an inch to each side. Finish off by creating tabs, then you can cut both of these out. Now, on to the gluing! And here I must give you a warning. I am choosing to use contact cement, however it's worth noting that contact cement is toxic. Always use contact cement in a well-ventilated area and wear a mask if you can. I open all of my windows and keep all the animals out. You could also use an archival glue. Archival glue is made to keep your book safe over time. It does not discolor or gum up. It's a lot like PVA glue. However, it does take longer to dry than contact cement, and well, um, I'm impatient. Once your pieces are covered, you should have a front and a back cover, as well as your text block. To mark the holes on my covers, I simply lined up my text block and marked where the stitch holes are. At this point, I should say that I was on a roll, I was feeling pretty good, then I went and checked on the rats and they, they seemed like they wanted attention and you know, one, one thing led to another and I brought them out on the bed and they were out on the bed for like a good hour, you know, I mean, Keely even watched Critical Role with me. That killed a really strong... Snuck into her room. We're eight. I noticed. Got dagger with us. Long story short, it's uh, it's the next day. But remember, I said it's good to take breaks. Anyway, I punched the holes in my covers and installed some grommets for it to look cleaner. I used a leather hole punch, however you could also just drill them. Are you still here? Are you still watching? I hope you haven't left, because it's time to finally start sewing that book together! Take your embroidery thread and your needle. And I left this part in because it's reminiscent of a chicken pecking. Go ahead and thread your needle, making sure that you don't get too much thread. I'll show you later how to add more thread if you need to. To begin sewing, take your back cover and bottommost signature. First, pass through the inside of your signature through to the outside. 
Then loop your needle through the outside of your cover. Loop underneath that stitch that you just created. Then pass back through to the inside of the signature. To continue, go back out the next hole and continue that process. When you reach the end, go ahead and pass through your signature and loop through your cover. Loop under that stitch and go ahead and pass the needle back into the next signature. To continue from here, pass through the next hole in your signature. Loop under your previous stitch. and then pass back into your signature. Continue this process for your remaining signatures. This is a long process and if you haven't yet, I recommend you put on a binge-worthy show. When you begin to run out of thread, go ahead and make your way back into the inside of the signature. Pass your needle under the previous stitch and then pass the needle back through that loop you just created. Pull this tight to knot it and I like to double knot for extra security. Thread your needle again and pass back through that hole that you just finished on. Continue your sewing as you had been. When you have one signature left, it's time to put on your front cover. Start by lining up your last signature and the cover along with the rest of the book. First, pass through the outside of your cover. Loop once underneath the previous stitch, then loop again through the stitch you just created. Now this is a bit tricky, but pass the needle through your signature to the inside. From here, continue out the next signature hole. Loop underneath your previous stitch. Pass through the outside of the cover. Loop through that stitch that you just created. And then pass back into the signature. Continue this until you reach the end. When you finish your last stitch, go ahead and pass the needle back to the inside and knot your thread off. You now have a completed book! Once you've reached this step, all that hard work really feels like it was worth it. Now, you could leave your book at this stage, however, I am choosing to add a couple extra details. I'm starting by adding some book corners. I also used my Cricut to cut out the Mighty Nine symbol in some heat vinyl. I'm ironing that onto the front cover. Look at me trying to be simply nail logical with my peeling. 
I am also using some leftover sewing scraps and some notions to create a strap. This strap allows me to hang the book off of my belts. And with those final touches, I'd say this project is done! All in all, I would say this is probably one of my favorite books that I have made. If you enjoyed this tutorial and found it educational, go ahead and subscribe because I plan to make more in the future. Hope you're all having a wonderful day, and thanks for watching! Thank you. Thank you for the kisses. Can I have my finger back? Thank you. <laughs>